who is this guy anyway? Well, you're about to find out. Hello, everybody. My name is Danny Kelly. Some know me as Neil K, which is a name that I went by for a couple of years when I first started out Nocturnal Nation, as well as a couple of other channels that I had in the past. And the reason for that was I had some online stalkers and I was trying to hide my identity. But earlier this year, I had someone to out me on a live stream. So I decided to drop the facade and be me, be my authentic self, which is Danny Kelly. Um, I am 57 years old. When I was three, I saw my daddy after he had died. He died in June of 1969. I turned three in September of 69. I saw my daddy in October of 69. And that, for me, opened up the door to the paranormal. I didn't ask for it. I didn't go seeking after it. It found me. Growing up, I did not understand why. I was told by my family that it was all just childhood imagination. I've been accused of being possessed by a demon. Even now, I struggled with my abilities growing up because of what I was told. But I remember, I remember countless situations where I was terrified. I was seeing things and hearing things that I weren't supposed to. I thought maybe it is all in my head. Maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe I, I need some medical help. What, what, what the hell is wrong with me? I don't want to go through every situation that I've been through because some of it is just really traumatic. Let's be real. Because I'm a child and I'm seeing spirits that look as real as you and I. When I was about 17, 18, I tried to turn everything off inside of my head. It started off with drugs. I'm not proud of it. But at that time, I was numb. And that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be numb. I did not want to feel. I did not want to see. And I did not want to hear all of these things that were going on inside of me. I had no one to talk to. No one who was like me that I could share this with. Because every time I decided to share who I am, I was told I was crazy. It was my imagination. Oh, you're just making this up. You're trying to get attention. I'm sure I am positive that I'm not the only person out there who's been through this.
I then moved from drugs, still trying to make sense of what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling. So I moved from drugs. I graduated, if you want to say that, to joining a satanic cult. That I did for two years. I'm not very proud of that. I'm not very proud of what I put my mama through while I was that way. My family was scared of me. Nobody wanted to hang out with me anymore. At family gatherings, I was always the black sheep. Still, I was trying to make sense of what was going on in my mind, my head, my body, everything. All of my senses were so heightened. Then, I joined the army. Still, wanting to escape, wanting to find someone, wanting something tangible that would tell me I'm not insane. While I was in the army in Korea, I met a couple of people who I became really close with. They were my my buddies, man. We were we were tight. And finally I felt like I had someone that I could open up to. So I did. They accepted me. They did not look at me like I had 18 legs and 44 eyes. They didn't look at me that way. How they saw me didn't change. That, for me, was the beginning of who I am today. While I was in Korea, I fell off of a two-story balcony head first onto a concrete slab. I was in a coma for a week. I remember during this time that I was in this coma, I had like an outer body experience. I traveled. I saw things. I was I was terrified. When I woke up, when I came to and realized who I was and where I was, I was already back in my barracks. I do not remember. There's a couple of weeks in my life, guys. I just simply, I don't remember. I just really don't. Well, got out of the army. You know, I, I, I came home. And I started attending church. I became a preacher. I preached for almost 15 years. Um, it was church politics that actually pushed me out of the church. And at that point, 
I decided to pursue what I do now as far as paranormal investigations. When I started out, <laughs> to be honest, I was scared. I didn't know what I was going to encounter. Because this time, instead of the spirits seeking me out, I was going and seeking them. And I did not know what I was going to run into. Well, I found my place. And now, I love me. I love who I am. I love being a paranormal investigator. This is my calling. This is what I was meant to do in life. I have no doubt about it, none whatsoever. Let me give a little backstory. So, my grandma, you always hear me talking about my grandma. My grandma was full blood Cherokee. I did not know this at the time that she, well I knew she was Cherokee but I did not know at the time that she was as gifted more so even than I and the gifts that I have were inherited from my grandma now I don't know 100% but I'm pretty damn sure that my dad, which is Cherokee, had the same gifts. I know my sons do, but they are, well, they don't really operate in the way that I do, put it like that. Which brings me to this point where I'm at right now. A little more than a year ago, I met this fine lady sitting next to me. And she was the very first person in all of my years who not only accepted me for who I am, but can also identify with who I am because she is as gifted as I am. Never did I ever think in my entire life that this dude would meet somebody like her who not only is beautiful and caring and has a heart of gold but also is not after to change me. She don't want me to fit her mold because we are so our energies so entwined with each other. I had someone several someones to criticize the way I use the dowsing rods. Some say dowsing rods were used only to find water or electrical lines, which they can be used for that. But, and really, that was the original purpose behind them. But it was discovered years and years ago that they can be used as a means to communicate with the dead. So that's what I do. I got my dowsing rod right here. I have a point that I need to prove. Someone said, several someones, that I manipulate the dowsing rod. I asked Debbie to help me with this. I'm going to put my hands, both hands around the dowsing rod. Let me move this mic a little bit. Excuse the popping. 
She is going to put her hands around my hands. Go ahead, baby. I am not able to manipulate this rod. You see what it's doing? I'm going to call my grandma. Grandma, if you're here, please let everyone know. Thank you, Grandma. Okay, baby. Thank you. Now I need to ask you, was my hands manipulating that rod? No. And there's no way this can be manipulated, and I want to show people something. This part rolls. It just rolls in your hand. So it's not something that you can actually take and make it turn left or right. There's no controlling this. There really isn't. Okay? The hand stays steady at all times. It does look like it's been used several times because it does have a natural like little dip to it right here at the end. But this does get used quite often. It does get folded and open, folded and open, put in and out of the bag. So... There's no way to manipulate this. No way. I mean, you see. Okay. I couldn't stop it if I wanted to unless I grab it. So there's no manipulation on this part. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. I hope that that part right there puts a rest to those of you who would say that I am manipulating the dowsing rods. I mean, how the hell can I do that? You just have proof. I don't want, this is not a ranting type video, so I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I just felt the need to put that out there. So who is this guy? Danny Kelly. Former preacher. Former Satanist. Former druggie, full time paranormal investigator, full time exorcist. This is who I am. I never asked for these gifts, but I'll be damned if I ever ignore them again. My whole outlook on life has changed. My belief system has changed. And because of this, I am at peace with myself because I don't have to pretend anymore. If you're out there and you're looking at this video and this resonates with you and you feel like you're all alone that no one understands no one believes you and you feel like you're going crazy let me reassure you you're not you're really not what's wrong is the way other people look at you you are simply a gifted individual now it's up to you what you do with your gifts. I choose to use mine to help people, the living and the dead. And that's just, it's just who I am, man. I really hope that this helps someone. And I want to tell you what sparked this with me. Debbie and I started watching a video series and it was about children who are gifted and it tells about the struggles that they have as a child 
trying to make sense of all of this. And I felt the need to share my story. As I said, there have been many situations, many instances when I was growing up. I can recall um, this one time I was in the bathtub and taking a bath. I was probably, well, I was in third grade, so you figure about what age that was. And as I was sitting in the bathtub taking my bath, I saw the cold water faucet. I saw the handle move and the water come out. I stood up in the bathtub and I screamed bloody murder. My mom and my pop came in the bathroom where I was at to see what was wrong. I told them, oh, Danny, you must have left the water running and forgot to turn it off. No. I know what I saw. I know what I witnessed. There have been many things like that. Seeing people. Hearing people. Being afraid in my own bedroom where someone was pulling the cover off of my feet and were tugging on my feet. This is when I was 13. I, I feel really bad for anyone who has these gifts and is ostracized because I was still am to be completely honest my family still thinks I have a demon in me they still think I'm evil as hell I've even had one of them tell me I was going to die and go to hell <laughs> really now and who made you God so anyway that's who I am. Danny Kelly. Paranormal investigator. Exorcist. Spiritualist. This is who I am. I hope this helped. I hope this helped you make sense a little bit more about who I am, why I do what I do, how I do what I do. Yes, I hear spirits. Now, I want to tell you this. Remember I told you that when I was about 17 or 18, I went into the drugs. Well, that's when I was trying to cut off all of these things that I was seeing and hearing. Because of that, when I opened myself back up to the reality of who I am. I can now hear the spirits just like I hear you speak, just like I hear anybody else speak. But now the way I see them, I don't see them in full body form like I used to when I was younger. Because I, I believe, I don't know if this is true or not, but I believe it's because that I did shut off those gifts. Now, when I see the spirits, I see them as a mist. If it's a, a bad spirit, I see a dark mist. If it's a good spirit, I see a white mist. So, when you see me out doing the investigations and you see me with a dowsing rod and I say stuff like, did you say your name was Nancy and the rod moves? It's not because I'm just grasping names out of the air. It's because they told me what their name was. And I say it audibly back so that you guys can hear what I'm hearing, but you're hearing it out of my own mouth. So that's it, man. Baby, do I need to add anything? Okay, well, that's Danny in a nutshell, or I should be in a nutshell. 
All right, guys. I love all of you. And I, I know that you're like, how the hell does he love me? You don't even know me. Dude, I don't have to know you to love you. Okay? When you experience life in the way that Debbie and I both do, you become more aware. So just let me say that I love you. I do. And as I always say, until next time, this here's Danny Kelly, and I will see you. Where at, baby? Where am I going to see him at? On the flip side. <laughs>